With millions of fans around the world, the Metal Gear franchise has become one of the most popular series in the history of video games. Metal Gear, for me, was the genre that introduced stealth to me. But how did Metal Gear begin? How did Hideo Kojima and his colleagues bring Solid Snake into 3D? And what is the future for this beloved franchise? Keep your codec tuned to this frequency and you'll find out. The Metal Gear saga started in Japan in 1987 when a young game developer named Hideo Kojima decided to build the world's first stealth action adventure. The original Metal Gear was a hit and spawned a sequel called Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake that was released in Japan in 1990. The series was dormant until the mid-90s when Kojima and his team began work on a new Metal Gear game for the original Sony PlayStation. Metal Gear Solid was released in 1998 and the game was a smash hit around the world. Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty was planned as a follow-up for the Sony PlayStation 2 and was released in 2001. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, also for the PlayStation 2, was released in 2004. And now, 20 years since he first appeared, Snake is back in a brand new global adventure for Sony's PlayStation 3 called Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. Metal Gear. The name goes hand in hand with a cutting edge, state of the art gameplay experience. The mention of the very words conjures up thoughts and images of stealth, cunning, rich characters, and tactical espionage action in the minds of any gamer. One of the things that strikes me is just the fusion of these memorable characters with really deeply compelling gameplay. The series is so renowned for pushing the envelope of 3D console-based gaming that it's sometimes easy to forget its humble beginnings as a 2D stealth action game for the MSX2 home computer system. Inspired by his love for Hollywood action movies, Hideo Kojima gave birth to one of the most memorable franchises in video games. Released by Konami in 1987, Metal Gear follows the story of an American Special Forces soldier codenamed Snake as he infiltrates the military stronghold Outer Heaven. Initially armed only with his wits, Snake seeks to find and destroy Metal Gear TX-55, a nuclear-armed walking tank designed to be the link between infantry and heavy artillery. Despite becoming one of the most recognized video game characters ever, players still know little about who Snake is. But then again, that was all part of Kojima's plan. As Snake makes his way deeper and deeper into Outer Heaven, getting ever closer to Metal Gear, he's aided by his commanding officer, Big Boss, via codec. Snake also utilizes an assortment of different weapons and helpful items unique to games at the time, including a silenced pistol, conservable rations, and even a player-guided rocket launcher. Despite the technical limitations of the hardware, Metal Gear features the same outside-the-box innovation challenging but rewarding gameplay, plot twists, boss battles, and puzzle solving that can be found in the most recent entries in the series. However, perhaps the most memorable aspect of the original game is stealth. Before Metal Gear came along, I always wanted to run headfirst into combat like Rambo. At the climax of the original game, Snake destroys Metal Gear only to find that his commanding officer, Big Boss, is himself the secret leader of the sinister Outer Heaven. 
the now hostile relationship between these two characters will become a staple of the Metal Gear series, as will the subtle social commentary on the role of the military that is left open to interpretation by the player. Metal Gear fared well in Japan, but in North America the game was a huge success. This drove Konami to produce a sequel for release exclusively in the West, known as Metal Gear 2 Snake's Revenge. However, this game was made without the consent of Hideo Kojima. Initially, Kojima-san did not plan on making a sequel to Metal Gear, but fan support and the creation of Snake's Revenge prompted him to revisit the series. The result was 1990's Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, released exclusively in Japan. Ignoring the events of Snake's Revenge, Metal Gear 2 follows the continuing adventures of Snake as he's sent to infiltrate Zanzibar Land. Along the way, Snake discovers that his old adversary, Big Boss, is the man behind this hostile nation and that he has built another, more advanced Metal Gear. This time around, Kojima delved further into the characters, explored complex political and military themes, and improved the enemy AI, making it more challenging to remain unseen. This was also the first game of the series to use cinematics to deliver crucial plot points, an imperative element for future Metal Gear games. Metal Gear 2 also introduced new characters, including Colonel Roy Campbell, Snake's new commanding officer, Frank Yeager, otherwise known as Gray Fox, who is seen briefly in the first game, is discovered to be a defector and a traitor who Snake must battle in a lethal fistfight. Upon the destruction of the new Metal Gear, Snake is confronted again by Big Boss and defeats him with a makeshift flamethrower by combining an aerosol can and lighter. Despite commercial and critical success in Japan, Metal Gear 2 would never see the light of day in America until the release of Metal Gear Solid 3 subsistence 16 years later in 2006. For all intents and purposes, Solid Snake and the Metal Gear series were finished as the 80s came to a close. But that was all about to change. In 1994, Sony released the original PlayStation console, and Hideo Kojima saw the powerful system as the perfect vehicle to reinvigorate his stealth action franchise. The Sony PlayStation was already a hit in Japan, but it became a true global phenomenon when it made its debut at the very first E3 trade show in Los Angeles in 1995. It was clear to Hideo Kojima and his team that the impressive hardware of the new console would be powerful enough to realize Metal Gear in a whole new way. Kojima and his team began researching, scouting locations, and even military training in order to make the game feel as realistic as possible. Motion capture techniques were used, dialogue was recorded, and a musical score was composed. The team spared no expense and endeavored to make the new Metal Gear game the most elaborate video game ever created. Metal Gear Solid in the PlayStation was a very major platform. After years in development, Metal Gear Solid was released in 1998 to rave reviews and eventually went on to sell over 6 million copies and earn countless Game of the Year awards. The game was primarily story-driven and stayed true to its clandestine predecessors. The advancements of the PlayStation enabled the player to perform more stealthy maneuvers than ever before. This new 3D technology, apart from making the game look more realistic, opened up a whole new world of storytelling for Kojima. 2D is, for example, change 3D Metal 
Although released in 1998, Metal Gear Solid is set in the year 2005 and picks up six years after the events in Metal Gear 2. It follows the exploits of Solid Snake as he infiltrates a nuclear weapons disposal facility in Alaska called Shadow Moses. その during Solid Snake's mission, he encountered some of the most important and memorable characters in the Metal Gear story. These included the fiery Meryl Silverberg, the resourceful Otacon, and Gray Fox's incarnation as the Cyborg Ninja. We're also introduced to Shala Shaska, otherwise known as Revolver Ocelot, and Solid Snake's genetically crafted twin brother, Liquid Snake, whose fates would soon be forever intertwined. Keeping with the tradition of terrific boss fights that were introduced in the 8-bit Metal Gear games, Metal Gear Solid delivers vicious combat scenes that pit Solid Snake against unforgettable villains like Vulcan Raven, Sniper Wolf, and Psycho Mantis. When you actually fight him, it pretends like it's changing the mode on your TV, like he's changing the video one to video two. And it just made you think about yourself playing the game, like outside of the game. Wait a minute, and then I realized that's not the brand of television I have. It's like, what's going on here? By the time that Liquid Snake had been defeated and the credits rolled on Metal Gear Solid, it was clear that Hideo Kojima and his team had crafted a true masterpiece in just the early days of 3D action gaming. And now the world was hungry for more of Solid Snake's adventures, just as speculation grew on a new PlayStation being created. The gaming world wondered what kinds of surprises Kojima's team had planned. In the late 90s, Metal Gear Solid was an enormous success on the PlayStation. The game had proven that Kojima's team was more than up to the task of moving their tactical espionage action series into three-dimensional gameplay. But by the year 2000, a new PlayStation console was almost upon us. The PlayStation 2 launched in Japan on March 4, 2000, while the North American launch of the console followed in November of the same year. The console had a monstrously successful launch amid complaints of a dearth of compelling games to play. The cries of not enough good games died a year later, however, as Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty was released in North America and Japan in November of 2001, and in Europe a few months later. 僕が一番好きなのはメタルギアソリッド 2 the game was definitely the next evolution of 3D tactical espionage action, but Kojima had a shock for anyone expecting to spend a lot more time with Solid Snake. In a controversial second act twist, the game switched out protagonists and put players in control of newcomer Raiden. The change of heroes was deliberate and focused purely on growing the fan base for the series. I was but to the team's surprise, the reactions to Raiden as the new main character were not universally positive. <laughs> それは今回の方を見てもらえれば分かると
Despite criticisms from players who desperately missed playing a solid snake, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty went on to become the biggest selling game in the entire franchise. Metal Gear Solid 2 was filled with some of the most spectacular visuals and cinematic scenes that video game players had ever seen. Stunning water effects, complex physics, deep layers of environmental interactivity and truly mesmerizing cutscenes were some of the calling cards for the game. The complicated story starts with a prologue that takes place two years after the events in Metal Gear Solid. The action begins with a dramatic leap off the George Washington Bridge as Solid Snake infiltrates a tanker ship to investigate the creation of a new powerful Metal Gear. During his infiltration, Snake combats invading soldiers who have come to steal the new Metal Gear called Ray. Snake also comes face to face with his old nemesis, Revolver Ocelot, who has had his severed arm replaced by the nanite infested arm of Liquid Snake. In a very tense face off, Ocelot murders the commanding officers on the ship and sets off explosives to sink it before escaping in Metal Gear Ray. And Solid Snake is apparently lost in the wreckage. Metal Gear Solid 2 picks up two years later and introduces Raiden as the playable character. Raiden infiltrates Big Shell, an offshore cleanup facility that has been overrun by terrorists, and attempts to rescue the hostages locked up in the installation. During his mission, Raiden battles extraordinary foes like Fat Man, a bomb-throwing sadist with a predilection for inline skates. Fortune, a woman with the power to make every bullet miss her, and Vamp, a creepy, seemingly immortal killer with a taste for blood. It doesn't take long for Raiden to recognize that things are not like they seem. Big Shell turns out to be a development facility for a new Metal Gear called Arsenal that has been commandeered by Solidus Snake, another genetic clone and brother to Liquid and Solid Snake. In the latter stages of Metal Gear Solid 2, the story veers in an entirely new and thought-provoking direction, suggesting that Raiden is actually a character in a Metal Gear video game. There's a point like where the game goes to a game over screen. And so you think like, I messed up, I died, but I didn't die. But the gameplay's still going on in that little window. Kojima signifies that it's, it's still a game but you nevertheless get completely sucked in because of all these other things he's doing to make it feel immersive and believable. Raiden must face up to the doubts that he has in the world around him before he can stop Solidus, and with Solid Snake's help, uncover the truth about the Patriots, the shadowy conspiratorial organization that has been the dominant force behind the events in the Metal Gear games. Needless to say, the complex narrative was a little overwhelming for some Metal Gear fans. Metal Gear Solid 1 is え、アクションゲームでありながらストーリーがあるっていう評価を得たんですよね。で、for Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, the newly formed Kojima Productions decided to take a more down-to-earth approach. 3は非常に簡潔なストーリーにしました。あの、スネークとザボスの関係に省略するということで。それでま、評判が良かったんで良かったなと。As the PlayStation 2 was handily beating the competition in the console wars during the early years of this decade, demand for a new Metal Gear game grew. And this time, Kojima Productions was prepared to release two epic Metal Gear Solid adventures in a single console generation. PlayStation Taking things in an entirely different direction, the developers chose to set Metal Gear Solid 3 in the past, at the roots of the Metal Gear legacy. The prequel would take into account real-world tensions at the height of the Cold War in the early 1960s. 
Once again, players would be in control of someone other than Solid Snake and would instead play as Naked Snake, a CIA operative that is sent into the jungles of Russia with his mentor, a female super spy codenamed The Boss. In the prologue mission, The Boss defects and teams up with the chief antagonist in the story, Colonel Volgan. After an intense fight, The Boss leaves Naked Snake badly wounded as she and Volgan make off with the stolen nuclear super tank and a predecessor to the Metal Gear called the Shagohod. After healing, Naked Snake is sent back into the jungle to defeat Volgan, confront the boss, and destroy the tank. To do this, Snake must face the members of the boss's Cobra unit. Many gamers have called these characters the greatest collection of bosses in the entire franchise. The End is an expert sniper that fights Snake in a long-range, protracted battle that can literally take hours. The Fear is a spider-like adversary with double-jointed limbs and a surgically enhanced tongue. The Fury is a former Russian cosmonaut who battles Snake with a flamethrower. The Pain has the ability to command hornets and uses them to combat Snake. The Soro, a spirit medium, is perhaps the most interesting of all the bosses in the game because he employs the power of the dead to fight Snake. You are walking through, you know, this stream and you're seeing these dead soldiers and you're like, okay, dead soldiers. And then you're, you start to notice like, wait a second, these are the ghosts of the people that I've killed. It makes you look back on what you've already done and sort of see it in a different way. Like, wow, I've really killed like a lot of people. Like if this was real life, I would be, you know, uh, completely haunted. From beginning to end, Metal Gear Solid 3 is the near-perfect prequel, setting up the events and characters that would follow it beautifully. Metal Gear Solid 3 also helped to define and cement the status of Kojima Productions as world-class game makers. The team had expertly shown how to get the most out of the PlayStation 2 hardware and had the sales and the critical praise to prove it. I'd never played through all of the Metal Gear games. So I had what I called the Metal Gear Summer, and I played through one, two, and three, back to back. I didn't play anything else, and it was the best summer I had ever had. But would the team be able to contend with another PlayStation console transition? Kojima Productions' toughest challenges lay ahead as the team faced the limitless potential and the baffling technological puzzles of the brand new PlayStation 3. Yeah, I think uh, the, the whole Metal Gear series has, has been a huge part of the uh, PlayStation success. The Metal Gear games, I mean, from the Psycho Manus battle to the uh, Jeep chase at the end of Metal Gear 1 to the opening of Metal Gear 2 on the bridge to, you know, the torture sequences that sort of live in all the games. It really is almost like an action movie art film. Kojima-san has left the world of the world, and there are a lot of things that I've ever seen. I think the most important thing I've ever seen is the way I've ever seen. The announcement and development of Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots represented a new era for Kojima Productions. As polished storytellers versed both in cinematic flair and dynamic gameplay, the new platform from Sony offered the experienced game makers the opportunity to dream big. With each subsequent release of a Metal Gear Solid 4 trailer, the world grew more and more excited by the promising look of the game. Was this the Sony PlayStation 3's most important game on the horizon? To many, it certainly looked that way. Metal Gear Solid 1 was a time when, for example, if you were to say, like, a tree tree, え、子供たちが、え、野原で集まって、え、やってるような野球に比べて、今のもうメタルゲソリッドの大リーグのペースボールのような、え、大きさになってます。もちろん、え、観客も随分と増えましたので、え、それなりに、え、責任を感じて、
うしてみたいなということをほぼ全て網羅してるというか遊びの幅を広く持つことでその世界の中で何ができるかなっていうふうに思ったユーザーにがっかりさせないというか。Cutscenes from previous Metal Gear games, as artful as they were, don't hold a candle to the new look and feel of Metal Gear Solid 4, which delivers imagery as close to reality as the team has ever come. The key word to be a camera is the camera. The handy camera is the camera. The 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 camera is そういう機構を考えました。Expectations from gamers and from the team itself were very high. The work involved in bringing this game to the PlayStation 3 was immense. The team size at Kojima Productions had swelled considerably, and the pressure was getting to Hideo Kojima. えっとね、プレステ3というか、うん、まあ次世代のマシンなんですけど、非常に作らないといけないものが多すぎですね。大変ですあのハリウッドの映画っぽい作り方に、まあ、現状になってますライン性というかで、えー、今回はプレイステーション3で、えー、作るものも当然増えたんですけどボリュームも非常にあってなおかつ、えー、これが一番大きいんですけど、えー、チーム員が、えー、一番多い時で200人ぐらいいますので200人対1人ということなので非常に大変ですそれが一番つらいですね小島監督のビジョンがとにかく大きいスケールなのでそれを実現させるためにその人に関してもそのプロジェクト自体も大きくなってそれはもう「メタルギアソリッド」っていうゲームに対してそのたくさんのファンが待ってくれているからできたことでもあると思うんですけれどもこうがちょっとこう悲しいことでもありますよねストレスがたまるのは一番そこです。The plan for the game was an epic send off for Solid Snake and an end to his decades long saga. I'd have to say, Old Snake's mental state is、uh, pretty ragged. Now he's deteriorating badly and he's really. Pay quite a price for his dedication to his country and to his job. The epic scale of the game meant that this time Kojima and his team would travel the world looking for appropriate locations for the most dramatic of confrontations. Sticking with his prescient ability to pick up on global concerns about the military industrial complex, Kojima focused the narrative on the growing influence of private military corporations. Metal Gear Solid 4 brings back familiar faces that have come and gone over the franchise's long lifetime, and the developers worked hard to come to a fitting conclusion for the series. Saga の、えー、最終作と完結編なので、えー、今まで出てきたキャラクターをですね、みんな幸せにしたいという思いがありまして、なるべく出しましたね。で、えー、彼らがどこに向かっていくのかっていうのも、えー、方法をやっていただけるとわかると。But is this really the end for Solid Snake? I'm in my heart. Solid Snake Saga is the end of the Metal Gear Solid Saga. Snake is a good friend. I'm 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 a good friend. 新しいキャラクターとか、新しい世界観とか、新しいあの物語を紡いでいった方がいいと思います。In its 20 years, Metal Gear has touched millions of lives. There are fans of this series from all corners of the world. Snake and his co-stars have entered video game and popular culture with tremendous style, and will forever be linked to the birth of the stealth action genre. It was the first. It's definitely a landmark series in video game history. やっぱりス,ステルスアクション。うん Will we see more Metal Gear games? Or has this series retired along with Solid Snake? Don't give up looking under suspicious cardboard boxes just yet. <laughs>